Hello, my name is Marci, and in this video I will show you how I made this hardwood standing studio desk. My wood of choice was steamed black locust, which is a very strange English name for a tree. However, it has a beautiful coffee brown color and it's just a little bit harder than oak. Also, this is what they had in the store in the size I needed. As you can see, I didn't make the legs. The platform is an autonomous smart desk premium. If you're looking for a video on how to make DIY sits and table legs, I've linked two in the description below. First, I put the slabs together to see how I would like it to be. The main desktop was made from a 150 cm wide and 100 cm deep piece, while the shelf was 40 cm deep. I decided to put a curve in it for more real estate on the main desktop and it looks more organic since the speakers face a little inwards anyway. I marked the place of the standoffs and cut them up to be 19 cm tall which leaves just enough space for four rack mounted units. Then I chose my favorites from a book called Basics of Hungarian Folklore Ornamentation, drew them and cut them out. Then I transferred them first to a throwaway piece of wood and started testing. For example, I found out I needed a new drill bit. I had had little experience in woodworking and especially no experience with the router as I just bought it for this project and either I did something wrong or it's just too crude a tool for this sort of ornamentation. Sometimes I would crash it and it would wreck havoc. Also I bought the cheapest routing bits and they were too short. I collected the sawdust for later. I taped the underside with masking tape and cut the curve into the shelf with a jigsaw. The jigsaw became a good friend of mine throughout this project. Next up was drawing the main ornament. These are not only decoration because then I should have carved them in the surface, but they also serve as cable management holes. So I chose the size based on the biggest connector that needs to fit through. In this case, a DVI. The fact that I needed to cut through limited the complexity of the motifs, but that's probably a good thing. It was complex enough for me. Look up traditional Hungarian furniture. You will find the most breathtaking masterpieces. This is nowhere near that. It's, it's an homage from an amateur. I'm trying to combine a modern, very functional studio desk with the old school. For the central motif, I chose a rose variation. For the sides, a basic tulip that would fit the speaker cables. For the standoff, I chose two heart shapes. One rather looks like an apple. I also rounded off every corner because it's just better. The first few cuts were still the learning phase. I used an old and dull drill bit and tampered with the router. Made a mistake and broke a piece, which I started over later. <laughs> I decided it's better if I cut the chaff with the jigsaw bit by bit. I realized not only can I cut precisely with the jigsaw, I can also practically shave with it, creating a very smooth curve. I bought a good drill bit, but it was almost too powerful and I needed to drill from both sides to avoid tear out. You can see the difference between the one I drilled from both sides and the one I drilled normally. I tried using masking tape on the underside, didn't help much, but I kept doing it anyway. This project took me about four months to complete, but not full time. I was doing it before or after work or for a few hours each time. Unfortunately, I don't have a workshop, so I had to pack everything out and away, which took a long time and I worked with very basic tools with no workbench. I pre-sanded the sides all around with a random orbit sander so that when I round off the profile with the router it wouldn't have bumps from the saw marks. Even though I couldn't use the router to cut out holes it was still a good purchase because I could use it to profile the edges which turned out very nice.
cutting out the center ornament was time consuming, but it ended up looking really great in its raw form already. And I only made tiny mistakes, so I enjoyed it. After lots of thinking, I decided to put a curve in the main desktop as well, but matching the shelf's curve would have been too sharp. So I wanted to find something else for a compass. Couldn't find anything. In the end, I, I drew it freehand with some guide points to hit. While cutting the curve I halved it and used one half as a guide to ensure it was symmetrical. It wasn't 100% precise but worked okay and round it off. The next step was filing the saw marks in those very intricate holes. This was the most time consuming part of the build but at least it wasn't loud. After some more thinking I also decided to ornament the sides of the desk with a shape reminiscent of the old grates that was drawn completely freehand. Once again, I mirrored it to ensure symmetry. Afterwards, I marked the keyboard tray to have the exact same curve as the desktop above it. I pre-sanded the sides all around with a random orbit sander. There were some bigger mistakes I couldn't fix, probably the result of doing it hastily in a time lapse. Then I used the router to get the keyboard tray flush with the desktop. Probably the fault of using cheap bits, but it turned out bumpy. I rounded off the profiles all around with the roundover bit and cleaned it up with the sander. Then I did some more filing. A lot more filing and rasping. It went so slow I started looking for alternative methods. I bought these little sanding bits and I realized my mom has this engraver or Dremel lying around that I could use. <sighs> Perhaps it was stupid to do it inside, but it's maybe a thousand times faster than anything I was doing before. Wish I thought of this sooner. This workaround made me very happy, but not everyone shared my feelings. Now I only needed to finish the smallest nooks. I'd seen on YouTube that if I mix wood glue with sawdust from the same wood, I can fix blemishes seamlessly. Well, that wasn't true. I also tried some places with only the glue, as according to the bottle it was supposed to turn transparent when dried. Luckily I was cautious enough to only try the undersides first and that was a good idea because the result looked like someone stuck chewing gum all over the bottom of the desk. Of course it's very possible that I did something wrong, don't know what though. Something I did definitely do wrong was apply the glue before the linseed oil. The oil darkened the wood to this beautiful deep brown color, except for the gluey bits, as you can see here. Then I applied wax, which I forgot to record. I used a bit of cloth for the most part and a brush for the nooks. This is a mixture of beeswax and carnauba wax. Anyway, I started assembling the thing. For the keyboard tray, I used a very simplistic mounting method with an extra piece I could drill into from 90 degree angles. I screwed the standoffs into place so I can mark where to glue them on the top. They are glued on the top so there are no visible screws and screwed from the bottom so the desk comes apart into two big pieces which makes it a lot more portable. I did away with the idea of a headphone stand and instead went for a headphone hook which is a lot simpler to make and is never in the way on the desk. I busted them out in an hour and a half which was a great feeling. I, I already felt the expertise. Then I assembled it and only one hole was misaligned. 
I decided where I would screw on the legs. And another mistake was balancing it empty. However, it's still very stable with speakers and a monitor all on one side. By the way, the legs are great. After almost half a year of using them, I would recommend it to anybody. And I have them. I like that they are quick, relatively silent, have programmable memory and are stable enough. <laughs> The last part was gluing on the hooks. I broke one in the process, but fortunately, I could glue it back together with no telltale sign. Unfortunately, when I put everything together, I realized that not all rack mounted units are the same size. My sound card was half a centimeter wider than the compressor I used for measurement, so here we go. Moreover, after a while I upgraded my audio interface and the new unit is even wider, so I had to tinker once again. But now the setup is complete. Cable management is kind of a nightmare when the whole thing has to move up and down every day. But I've spent so much time and I bought all these ties and hooks and glue. And now I think it looks all right. To sum up, I'm very happy with the result. The finish is a bit too delicate. It's especially sensitive to cup stains. You know who I'm talking to. I can also see one now. Um, so it maybe wasn't the best choice, but in general, I'm very happy with my new desk. I'm very proud of it, and I now judge my friends based on the reaction they have to it. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe for all sorts of different content that have no relation to one another whatsoever. See you.